Oh, hello over there. How are you doing? Welcome to my kitchen. Today, I'm going to be making a very delicious dessert for all of you guys. Um, this is going to be amazing. It's gonna taste really well. I got this dessert from my good friend, Sinead, who lives in sunny Cratfield uh, in Suffolk, England. Now, Sinead told me, Owen, this uh, recipe, uh, this dessert is not a pavlova. Now, many of you probably know what pavlova is, but the recipe today is gonna be something so much sweeter. So, uh, this is called a roulade. Now, roulades are um, delicious. So, what I've gone ahead and done to prepare for the roulade is I bought all of the ingredients. Now, we live in America right now, I live in America right now, and I can't get those ingredients. Um, it's very difficult to get all of the exquisite ingredients that are supposed to be in a roulade, but I was able to use the handy world of Amazon online shopping to get the ingredients that I need. So let me just show you real quick what you need for this recipe, uh, this very tasty roulade. First of all, you need a pan, okay? This pan is vital to the recipe because we're gonna be putting the meringue on the pan. We also need some baking paper. This is a non-stick parchment baking paper. Cost me like two quid uh, over at Walmart, so pretty easy to grab a hold of. A bowl. A bowl is going to be used to mix some stuff in it. Uh, over here we have a mixer. That's for mixing up our eggs. Right here we have, now this one was a bit tricky to find, but super fine Baker's Castor Sugar. Um, this isn't like regular sugar, this is very fine sugar. So when you put it into the mixture, it melts really easily. We also have cane icing sugar. Now it's made in the UK. You can see there's a wee flag right there. Uh, made in the UK, so this is going to be delicious. Everything in the UK is delicious. And for the cream of the cream of the creme, creme de la creme, we've got English double cream. Now you know this is from England, not just because it's got a Union Jack on it, uh, not because it says English double cream, but you know this is from the UK because of how tiny it is. Nowhere in America would you be able to find a pot this small. So, we've got all of the ingredients that we need. The only other thing are eggs, and I can't actually show you the eggs right now because they're inside the refrigerator and my camera is situated right on top of the refrigerator, so I don't want to move the camera. But, that's everything. The only other thing I have um, is some fruit. Now, you probably can see over there, there's some, uh, there's some peaches, but when I had this um, dessert um, in, in sunny Cratfield with my good friend Harasimus and Sinead, they made this recipe with raspberries. So, I went to um, the fries shop and I bought some raspberries. So, this recipe is going to be basically what it was when I ate it in, in England, in Cratfield. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. So here we go. There we go. There are the eggs. There are the strawberries. I'm not gonna be using the strawberries though. Probably not. I'm gonna be using the fresh, very fresh raspberries. Um, so this is gonna be fantastic. Let's get started. Now, the first thing that the recipe says for us to do is preheat the oven to 180 degrees Celsius. And I did some uh, equations on Google and I found out that that is about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start preheating our oven to 350 degrees. Now the recipe says in a very clean grease-free bowl, so this doesn't have any grease in it, so hopefully this will work, whisk the egg whites until they stand in stiff peaks. 
Add the sugar as slowly as you can bear to. A tablespoon at a time is ideal, but I'm never that patient whisking confidently in between. Now, I don't know who wrote this recipe. I don't think it was Sinead. It sounds more like a very apprehensive uh, French baker. Uh, but I will try add the sugar as slow as I can bear to, and I will confidently whisk in between. I'm going to use a bowl for this just to crack the eggs into and get the egg whites on their own. Actually, I will get two bowls. Hold on. Two bowls. Okay, we've got two bowls. One I'm going to put the eggs in, and the other one I'm going to put the egg whites in. One I'm going to put the yellow eggs in, and one I'm going to put the other eggs in. So what I'm doing here, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just dropping an egg from shell to shell until all of those whites are used up and only the yellow egg remains. So, yellow egg goes in there, the whites are all in here, and that's great, that's one egg. Now we're supposed to do this with four eggs, so let's try and get the next one. And that did not work. I actually dropped the whole egg in. So what I'm gonna do is scoop him out. Okay, I'm actually able to scoop him out there. So you can see I've actually scooped him up there. I've collected him right there. I'm gonna put him in here. Very good. Okay, that's two. We're nearly done, halfway. Here's number three. Okay, that didn't go quite as planned as I thought it would, but um, I'll try and scoop it out with a spoon. A bit of yellow. Okay, I, I think we I think we got most of it out, but um, we'll just have to try do one more here. Here we go. Okay, I think we got most of them. Add the sugar as slowly as you can bear to, whisking the eggs until they stand in stiff peaks. Okay, so we got to start whisking. So there they are. Here's our whisker, and uh, there's our egg whites. So let's start this up. I'm gonna pour these eggs in here, these egg whites. There we go. And start whisking until it's slow, stiff peaks. Wow, that's pretty crazy looking. Let me show you this. Look at that, those are egg whites. I'm gonna start adding a bit of sugar. So um, the recipe says a tablespoon at a time. So we're gonna try that. Okay, I'm gonna open the caster sugar. Now one cup is about 250 grams. So we want a little less than a cup. So that's about 225 right there. Now the recipe says to add a tablespoon at a time. So I got my tablespoon here. I'm just gonna dip in here and we'll just uh, we'll just start whisking. Here we go. This is not the best mixer, but it's okay. We're gonna keep adding a tablespoon at a time. It's 
pretty exciting. It's starting to look like like uh, an actual recipe here. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm not patient enough to do a tablespoon at times. So I'm just uh, I'm just gonna dump a bit of this in here. We'll try that. Guys, this is the worst mixer that I've ever used. I've never actually used a mixer. But um, I'm just gonna go the old by hand way. Here we go. This is a true cook's way. This is the old school way. This is how they used to bake back in England. Back in the dark ages. They had to use a proper whip. No electronics. No electronics. It's starting to become more sticky peak. I'm whisking confidently in between adding the sugar. I'm adding this sugar as slowly as I can bear to. I can fully understand why electronic whisks were invented. Okay, I can't take any more of that whisking. There you go. It's looking, it's looking okay. I don't know. But we have to immediately, when all the sugar is absorbed, the meringue should be very stiff and glossy. Immediately turn it onto the baking sheet and smooth into a square two to three centimeters thick. Bake for 15 minutes. Okay, let's go time. This is very awkward. I'm probably making a lot of mistakes. That's baking, just in a nutshell. Um, hopefully it's all right. I don't know why this recipe says, put it in the baking sheet and smooth it into a square two to three centimeters thick. How can you get this two or three centimeters thick? Like, I, I don't know how you could measure that. There's absolutely no way to measure it. Maybe I didn't whisk long enough, I don't know. But, We've tried it, we're just gonna have to go with it. That's all you can do. This actually makes me think a little bit about um, something something that serious, you know. Sometimes in life, you're unable to control things. You just have to trust that the, the roulade will come out how it should. Trust the Lord and uh, keep practicing, keep getting better, you know. We start out awful as bakers, but we eventually get better at our, at our craft. We uh, 
we can excel. Here we go, lads. Into darkness. Into the oven. So that we can come out stronger, refined by the fire. Okay, it's inside the oven. Just put it in there. There it is. I think the issue is going to be, it looks a little thin. It said in the instructions in the recipe uh, to, to do two to three centimeters thick, but this is barely a centimeter, so I'm worried. I don't know how people do this. I don't know how you get two to three centimeters thick, but we'll see. All right, here is, here is the end. Turning the oven off, and we hope that it's good. Okay, this looks a bit funny. It smells a bit weird, doesn't it? My friends came over. This is Tim, and what's your name? Tim. And Tim. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, these, That's these are these are my two friends, Tim and Tim, <laughs> and we're uh, we made the roulade here. So let me just get something to pull this out. Here we go. And we'll, uh, it says to take it out and let it cool. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, let it cool for a few minutes. We will be back in a couple of minutes. So the instructions say, remove the meringue from the oven. The outside should be crispy and the inside spongy wet. So I was just looking at this here and this looks crispy. And the inside looks spongy. So... I think this is a success. So in just a minute, we are going to peel off the baking paper, let it fully cool, then we're gonna add the cream, then we're gonna add the raspberries, and everything's gonna be golden. Ooh. I pull it off. Careful. Off the tail. Yeah, just, just rip it. Go, go, go. Okay, we gotta get that bit. Come on, we got this. <laughs> oh no. It's not, it's like... It's Bro, everything was going perfectly until... It's sticky on the bottom. It's too sticky. It's too sticky, you're right. Okay, so... We're gonna have to just work, workshop in a bit. Here we go. Gonna put the raspberries on here now. No, it, it does say that if you are a professional, you can roll the meringue, so I'm gonna try to do that. The final touch, a bit of icing sugar. <laughs> Alright Sinead, I think the meringue roulette is done. I have to just add a wee bit more fruit on the top and then I will show you what we've got. Alright Sinead, although the meringue looks a bit funny, it's not how it looks, it's how it tastes. Here we go. Look at this. The finished masterpiece. Several layers thick. You can't really see the layers there. But there we have it. Thank you so much for showing me how to make one of the greatest desserts I'll ever make. Okay, we're gonna cut some up for my friends. And they are going to taste test. 
And just as you did it, Sinead, I got some ice cream to, to go with it. They say a baker's skill is in its, his presentation. And that looks pretty amazing. It does look pretty good, bro. Let's see what Zach thinks. Wait, I gotta get you a spoon. Wait! Zach is going to taste. Get that raspberry on there. Get some ice cream. Wait, be honest, bro. Be honest. If it's not good, tell me. No, it's pretty tasty. Ooh. Let's go! Thanks, Sinead. I'm not as good of a baker as you are, but I enjoyed making that, and I will try to do a better job on flipping it next time so that it comes out how yours came out when we came over to your house. <laughs>